So this uh, video today is about legal fictions. The points I need to make are involving basically court cases or um, the opinions written by judges. So changing the position or the issue in a case changes the conclusion, changes the judge's um, decision. So if he can change the position or the issue, he can change the result. Changing the conclusion and position changes the meaning of the words. So when we have a premise in a case, and I'll describe to you what premises are in a minute. When we have a premise in a case and the premises have been changed, we're changing the meaning of the words. Changing the meaning of the words will change the result. Courts and judges use many words to deceive. They change the position of the issues, which is the premise which changes the proposition, which changes the conclusion. When they change the points of the issue, they change the conclusion. They change the points to achieve the desired decision, which is usually to expand government or to ensure government does not lose the case or to be sure that a specific person wins. These are fictions and case law and they are sometimes very hard to spot. So here's the definition of a few words that you might um, care to know before we get started. A premise is a position used in an argument to support the conclusion. Circumlocution, the use of many words where fewer would do, especially in a deliberate attempt to be vague or evasive. In other words, using many words to deceive instead of fewer words to be more clear and truthful. Expository, intended to explain or describe something. In Legal Fictions by Lon Fuller, I quote, or he quotes, the exposition fiction, or the expo expository fiction of a corporate personality Prevert, uh, preserves the premise, a position used in an argument to support the conclusion, that only, quote, persons, end quote, have rights in order to avoid the circumlocution, the vagueness, that would otherwise be necessary. In the case of the expository fiction, because of the linguistic change that almost inevitably occurs, the reconciliation of the specific result with a premise takes plain in form only. In fact, the premise is altered. The word person acquires a new meaning to fit the specific result. So they change the issues in the case, slightly probably, so that it's not readily noticeable, in order to change the outcome. And when they do that, they're changing the meaning of the words and giving the words new meaning. So when person uh, means a human being or a man or a woman, it now also means a corporation. In the book Knowledge, Reality, and Value, A Most Common Sense Guide to Philosophy, Michael, Michael Humer gives an example of an argument with obviously false premises. Premise 1. Socrates is a fish. Premise 2. All fish live on Mars. Conclusion, therefore, Socrates lives on Mars. The first premise is false. The second 
premise is false. The conclusion, therefore, is false. When judges use false premise in court opinions, they change the meanings of the words they use. They also change the conclusion. So the conclusion, they'll give a false premise that appears to be true, another false premise that appears to be true, and then they'll have a conclusion that is also false but appears to be true, but the conclusion is the one that they wanted to acquire. Presumption of the Law, another book, quote, what is the matter with the legal mind? Has the legal profession become so muddled in reasoning about presumption that it is advisable to drop the word and substitute some other words for it entirely or in certain connections? When judges lie to change ideas and further the enlargement of government, some might say this is a violent act. Inquiry into the Human Mind by Dr. Reed. Quote, Lying, on the contrary, is doing violence to our nature and is never practiced, even by the worst men, without some temptation. Therefore, might we say that court opinions based on fictions or legal systems based on fictions are lies to which are not just crimes but violent crimes against human humanity or nature? Dr. Reed continues, Secondly, when we are influenced by moral or political considerations, we must be conscious of that influence and capable of perceiving it upon reflection. So thinking about how they're trying to influence us. In some of my other videos, we have talked about how the courts change the meaning of words, how they do it by altering the issues, and when they alter the issues, they can come to their desired conclusions. Some of these word changes are how the words or intention of the laws are perceived. So some word and phrase meanings that we believe we understand, we do not really understand, are such things as taking, they say is finding when they took it. Finding, which really means they stole it. Unity, not really united or in unity. United, not really united, or only some are united. Meeting, such as meeting of the minds, which actually means consensual. Sleep, not asleep, but intending to sleep, but also having eyes closed, looking like sleeping. Actual, but not actual, means constructed. Constructive, often misused, doesn't mean actually constructive. Person, which means not a person, a corporation or a legal entity. Delivered, which means not really delivered. Notice, which does not really mean that you were notified, but simply that it was filed somewhere. Estate, which means condition, status, or conversion. Possession, doesn't mean possession, doesn't mean you actually have it. Death, an authentic death of a body or the death of a legal fiction or corporation, or a civil death. A fact, which is not actually a fact, and a choice, not having an actual constructed choice, but having to choose between what options you are given, even when you do not want the options given. Then we have court cases which use metaphors such as 
as if, like, is, similar to, in a like case, is not like when it is like, if and then, and many more, in Knowledge, Reality, and Value, a Most Common Sense Guide to Philosophy, Michael Humer, says subjective claims requires a judgment call so it cannot be straightforwardly and decisively established, such as it is an offensive act where offensive is subjective. It is worse than when it is better that, or people disagree that, and these are subjective claims in case law. So this is how the state courts and the federal courts and the inferior courts get around truth, get around facts, get around evidence, and establish um, fictions and use fictions in case law, most often uh, disguised as looking like facts when they're not. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section. And if you want to know more, check out some of my other videos.